I want to share some things very important, uh, a change in our structure and a, and a change in our ministry at Victory Church that's going to be, it's going to impact all of us. It's positive. It's good. It's great. And I'm excited about it, but I want to share it. I, I've chosen today to share it with you. Uh, most of you know, we've been, we've talked about this this year. This is my 35th year of pastoring this church. Um, I know I just look I'm for, like I'm 40, but I, 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 I know that. Don't even tell, tell me, don't, you're so young. Pat. I, know, I got it. I know. Carrie tells me that every day. But I've actually been the pastor for 35 years. And on this Thursday, I'll turn 65 years old. Wow. Yeah, 65 years old. My daddy, my daddy died of a heart attack when he was 30 years old. I was six, my brother was, uh, my sister was five, my brother was uh, 16 months old. My mother was widowed at the age of 26. When I found out about Jesus and found out about his healing promises, I began to confess and believe I've got my heavenly father's heart, not my earthly father's heart. And now I've more than doubled his age and I have I had a little heart thing or two, but you know what? I feel good. It's all good, man. I, I believe I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus and I'm okay. Everybody's been asking me out in, the, out in the lobby, you know, the last couple of weeks, how you feel, how you feel, how you feel. I really thought I had you talk better than that. It's not about feelings. It's about what Jesus did for us. I believe I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And, and, and I'm eating good stuff and I'm on the treadmill and my wife is keeping me straight. And so it's all good. All right. So it's all good. It's all good. However, uh, uh, we've been talking in the, in the uh, board meetings, the last three or four years annual board meetings, about a succession plan. When your pastor is a long-term pastor and then he begins to get into that sixth decade of life, you, you have to begin to think about a succession plan. What happened if he were to uh, leave this earth and go on to heaven? What would happen? What happens after he retires? And so we've been talking about the succession plan and a lot of churches have really... Uh, fallen into disrepair because they didn't have good plans. So we've been talking about this and planning this. And um, uh, it's also true that because of these health concerns and because I've been here taking the weight and the stress of ministry for 35 years, I've decided I really want to step back and kind of de-stress my life some. I want to change my role in ministry. I do not want to quit ministering or living. I do not want to leave you. I am not retiring. I'm talking about refocusing and reprioritizing my life and reorganizing some of the things we do here at the church. But I live here in Amarillo. I've got a home and a family here in Amarillo, and I'm going to be here in Amarillo for a long, long time. And I'm part of this church and will always be a part of this church as long as I'm living in this town. Because there's no other church to go to. You can tell them I said that. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm just joking around about that. I'm sure there's good churches here. But, 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 but I'm committed to this place. I, I do, however, want to make some adjustments and refocus myself on my greater gifts, my stronger spiritual gifts. And in these next few years, I just want to do that. I, and I feel like it's best for me, my family, and I, I think it's best for the church. Uh, I think that my stronger gifts are preaching, teaching, evangelism, gifts of the Spirit, things like that. Not necessarily uh, organization. Or administration. And so what I want to do is step back and let someone else step into organization and administration. And I think it's going to only make us stronger. In the book of Acts, uh, five-fold ministry gifts, apostles, prophets, pastors, those I mentioned a while ago, they appoint their successors. They would appoint people to go. They would pray over people as they were led by the Spirit. They sent out Paul and Barnabas to be apostle missionaries uh, there in Acts 13. That This is the model that we're set. They didn't have votes. They didn't vote pastors and the prophets and apostles in and out. How many of you know Jesus chose those people? When I came and became the pastor of this church, I was appointed by the previous two pastors, Pastor Jerry Phillips, Pastor James Maloney. James Maloney, by the way, is going to come to a prophetic conference, a little three-day prophetic meeting for us in May. It's going to be exciting prophetic gifts flowing through him. But those two men set me in office here as they were led by the Spirit. And um, they must have done a pretty good job. I, I stayed set for 35 years. I haven't been re reset anywhere else. So uh, we believe in Book of Acts pattern. And so I believe that I am to choose my successor as I'm led by the Holy Spirit. 
I'm going to go ahead and name my successor today and talk about the process that's going to happen over the next few months and years. Um, I believe, and he has prayed, and his wife has prayed, and we have come to an agreement. We have also gone to the board, presented our plan, what I'm about to reveal to you. They've enthusiastically agreed with it and accepted it and passed it. Uh, the next lead pastor that will follow me after I leave the senior pastor position will be Pastor Brian Gibson of River City Church in Owensboro, Kentucky. Yeah. Both he and his wife were discipled, trained, sent out in ministry from this church. They, they're products of this church. They love this church. This church loves them. They're our most popular guest speakers, I guess. They uh, are great leaders. They went to a town of 50,000 14 years ago, started with teenagers and college students in a coffee shop. And today their church is same size as ours, just 14 years later. Tremendous ministry in Owensboro, Kentucky. And... Uh, they want to continue in that ministry, but they also believe that they should lead the charge in this ministry uh, with, uh, in the next few years and into the future. And so because of that, we've come up with a plan that's going to be a little bit different for us, but hang with me here. It's going to be good, and we're going to have the best of both worlds, I believe. I'm not going to stop preaching and teaching. I'm going to still be preaching and teaching. Many, I'm going to continue to be lead pastor through this year. But in November, I'm going to turn the reins of the lead pastor over to him. I'm going to step back and be a, a supporting staff pastor. I'll be mostly preaching, teaching, focusing on what I feel like I'm best at. That's what he wants me to do as well. And so I'm still going to be here, still speaking a lot of services. Nothing's going to be taken away from our church. We're only going to add to it. Instead of just David, we're going to have Pastor Brian and Pastor Jesse and a rotation of speakers. And we're going to have... One flow and one message because, again, their doctrine, their perspectives, their loves, their priorities are the same as ours. They were produced by this ministry. Now, the other side of this, though, is there's that church, and they're heavily invested there. So what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to join our two churches together into one church organization, which will strengthen both of these churches and will be a launching pad for us to plant other churches and other campuses in the future. There's going to be plenty of room for growth and appointment for our leaders and people that want to grow and take on more responsibility in the kingdom. In other words, we're going to be a kingdom advancing organization like never before from these two campuses. Amen? Our focus this year is uh, slowly transforming and changing some of our systems and some of the ways we're doing things. Uh, in a little bit, you're going to see that uh, we're going to uh, have a lot of different speakers over the weekends. We're just basically doing weekends on Wednesday nights. I'll be a principal speaker here. He'll be there, and, but we'll switch it around some. Uh, we're going to be strengthening each of these campuses to reach their own specific city and working toward the end of the year when that final transfer of senior pastor will go over, but we're beginning right now immediately to blend these ministries and to work together on our plans. I'm going to be focused, uh, as I said, on teaching, preaching, advising, mentoring. Pastor Brian will be focused on leading the organization. Together, we're going to see great things for the kingdom of God. I've got a video to show you. I want you to watch the video. Oh, let me say this before we start the video. I know there will be questions come up. I can't take all open questions today in a Sunday morning service, but I'm accessible. You can e if you have a specific question of any kind, email me at david at evictorychurch.org. Very simple. David at evictorychurch.org, or you can call the church number. And if I'm not here, leave a message. I'll call you back, 359-9463. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might want to ask me. I'm going to de-stress my life. I'm going to step back, lighten up, spend a little more time with my wife and my grandkids. But I'm still here. I'm still part of the church. I'm still preaching and teaching. Another question that came up as we talked to leaders last night, is this just going to become a video camp? No, 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 no. This is Mama Church. Now, we'll use video probably a little more than we're using video right now. But, but we're not decreasing our number of speaking pastors. We're, we, we've already got three primary speaking pastors here. We're adding two more plus their associates. So both of these churches are going to have plenty of leadership 
and live ministry right here in Everserve. Nothing's much going to change except for our, as far as what, how we care for you, how we minister to you, what we teach you, or how we love you. Nothing's going to change. We're changing organizationally, strengthening so we can do more for the kingdom of God. Is that okay? Amen. Watch this video and I'll be right back. Thank you. Hello, Pastor David Brown here, and I want to say hello to Victory Church in Amarillo and also River City Church in Owensboro, uh, our two churches uh, coming together today and, and hearing about our bright future together, and we're excited about it. Pastor Brian Gibson and I, excited yeah. about it, excited about uh, joining our gifts, our talents, our teams together uh, to advance God's kingdom, to plant more campuses, and to uh, see God's power and God's grace come into so many more people's lives than we could ever do alone. Together, I think we're seeing a great vision unfold. Uh, I'm excited about it, and I want Pastor Brian to share with you his thoughts on this uh, as we begin a brand new journey together today. Hey, it's, it's an honor to get to talk to you, and uh, just wanna say two of the most important churches and important places on earth for me is uh, Amarillo, Texas and Victory Church. And, and what uh, Pastor David's ministries meant in my life. You know, a lot of you know the story, some of you may not, but I, I came to Victory in 1998. And I was a kid that was all messed up. I had no direction in life. Uh, drugs had a hold on me. And Pastor David preached the gospel to me. I was born again, uh, was water baptized. I was spirit filled learned how to do ministry, uh, ran off with the guy's daughter. So uh, I was married at Victory Church, man, ordained at Victory Church. I forgive you, by the way, for <laughs> the daughter. You <laughs> forgive me. I, I think I've been pretty good to her so yeah. far. But I, I just want to say, Victory Church in Amarillo, I think I wouldn't be alive if it weren't for you. So it, it's massive to me. And also River City. Man, God spoke to me uh, years ago. Jesse and I were going to school at ORU. God spoke to me, and I wanted to be an evangelist because church people are crazy. And uh, I wanted to preach, and then I wanted to leave and not have to deal with the mess. Mm. But, you know, God loves me, and I'm crazy. He loves us all. And God spoke to me at ORU, and he said, I want you to build me a church, build me a church, build me a church. And so Jesse and I, we went to Owensboro. We love Owensboro with all of our heart. We've given 14 years there in ministry, and we got a lot more years to give to you. I'm just getting started here, Owensboro. I'm just catching my stride right now. And just to see what God's done at River City, it's been incredible. We see people born again every week, lives changed, people delivered. And that's not going to uh, end, that's really just beginning. And so what God's doing is he's taking these two church bodies and he's making it one. Uh, Pastor David, he's going to remain on the teaching team. It's been a voice in my life and will continue to be. And then we're going to be better. Two are better than one. The Bible says that. That, that we can walk in agreement and we're going to get a ton done. And here's some of the, the vision of, of what we see happening. Uh, there are a lot of churches, uh, some people aren't used to this locally, but there are a lot of churches in America now that they're one church in multiple locations. Right. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be all, and they're, they're moving so strong, they're building all over the earth. You think of the Hillsong Church, many of you are influenced with Hillsong music. They're, they're putting church campuses all over the world. There's Life Church in Oklahoma City. They put churches all, all over America. Mm -hmm. Uh, my church is familiar with Dr. Morocco, King's Cathedral in Maui. They're up to like 150 campuses. You know, what we can do as a church, it, it's really larger than any of us could ever imagine. Sure, yeah. We got a God that can do more than we think. Absolutely. We? And I, I really believe, here's the goal. I think we ought to have a face size goal as a congregation. I think God can use us to multiply and use us as a force to change America. Now I think we can go from, from two campuses to two locations right now. I'm believing God for a hundred locations between now and whenever the next uh, group of young people come and, and are at the helm and the leadership of this church. That's what I'm believing for. And what it's gonna take is it's gonna take us operating as a team. Mm -hmm. More than ever before, we need you to help us. We need you to pray with us. We need you to believe God with us. Uh, nobody can do something like this alone. God calls us to work together. We're the body of Christ. And I want to encourage you to begin to pray. But begin, some of you may want to fast today with us for this. And I'll tell you, I believe God's going to start to raise up leaders in all of our ranks at another level. There's going to be leadership opportunity. There's going to be adventure. Man, the faith life is supposed to be about 
putting something out there out of nothing by faith, believing God. And I think it's a time that we can do that supernaturally. Come on, we're gonna have a great adventure. Come with us. God's gonna do miracles on our behalf. We love you and we look forward to seeing you. Come on, God's gonna touch the world through these church bodies. Brian, let's pray together. Um, I'm excited about a, uh, a new generation of leadership and raising up the next generation of leadership. You know, the kingdom of God is multi-generational and uh, that's what we're seeing and, and what we're connecting with, with our churches and becoming one is multi-generational leadership and discipleship, growing God's kingdom and making sure the next generation and the next after that hear this wonderful, powerful, good news of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Yes, sir. Both congregations pray with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. we ask for your blessing, for your guidance, for your strength, for your power, for your grace yes. to flow through this new organization, this new church. And Lord God, for you to do what only you can do, do the miraculous as we present your good news to the world in a fresh, new, and bold way. We believe you for it. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, yes. amen and amen. Amen. All right, we're handing out a little uh, slip of paper that has information front and back about some of the scheduling over the next couple of months, some things happening. By the way, did you see, did you see Pastor Brian in that video? Did you see the gray in his beard? We better grab him before he gets too old for us. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> you know, he's not as tough as I am. Anyway, so let's grab him now. Um, on this sheet, you'll see uh, a lot of the thinking and the philosophy of what we're doing and then scheduling in the back, you'll see there's a lot of rotation of, uh, in the next couple of months. You'll see that I'm not doing any speaking in May. That's because I'm gonna go on an extended sabbatical vacation, do some resting in May. And um, uh, my family, my daughters, my wife, staff members all want me to do that. So I've surrendered to their will and I'm gonna do that. But anyway, but I'll, still, I'll be back, I'll be around. I'm not leaving town for good or anything like that. Um, so this will be this will have some information for you again any more questions that you might have uh you can talk to us here at the church you can talk to me specifically using that email address and also the phone number here at the church i love you guys by the way we shared the same video same information with the river city church just this morning and all their services they, this is a, a big change for them as well so far all of his leaders uh have welcomed this news enthusiastically we're really excited. I'm excited about it. It's going to be good, good for us and good for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for being here on such an important Sunday. A couple of announcements tonight, ladies, don't forget, 7 o'clock over there. We're going to have a great time bringing finger food. There's child care. Also, please sign up. Go ahead and sign up for the spring brunch. You just have to come and we're going to gab and talk and we're going to honor some women. We're going to honor moms, that, uh, uncle, not uncles, aunts, cousins. We're, gonna, we're just going to have a great time. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of laughter, a lot of songs and just a great time. I encourage you to register for that. And then if it's your first time, we have a gift for you. Inside that gift box is a movie night. So be sure it's a red box. Little y'all ever seen Red Box? Red Box gift card and popcorn. And so if it's your first time, please step over here where these young people are and uh, talk to them, give them your information. And we thank you guys for coming today. Y'all have a great rest of the day.